I usually like to break down three fights on the main cards of a lot of these UFC fights. Uh, for this one, as far as the other two outside of the main and co-main event between Cynthia Calvillo and Pearl Gonzalez, I really don't know a whole lot about either of the two fighters. Calvillo, we've seen just fight about half a round in the UFC so far against Amanda Cooper. Gonzalez, I haven't seen yet. Uh, Alves versus Cote is a good fight, and then also Brooks versus Oliveira is on the main card. I'm going to focus in on Will Brooks versus Char- Charles Oliveira because I think this is the more interesting fight. I think that the winner here has a lot more potential to work their way towards the top of a division, whereas Alves versus Cote, both of those guys have had title shots in the past. They've had their moments, but it doesn't feel like either of them are really ever going to break into the top 10 again, let alone break into the title picture. So as far as the Will Brooks versus Charles Oliveira fight goes, Brooks was a guy who had a win over Ross Pearson on his first fight since he came over here from Bellator. Won that fight, looked good in the first couple of rounds, uh, had to just kind of survive the third, had, had the next fight against um, Alex Ol- Cowboy Oliveira. Uh, Oliveira weighed in way above 155, and that was his one fight at lightweight. He ended up moving up after that. And he's a tough guy to deal with regardless. Brooks was doing okay in that fight, but had a rib injury that he suffered through the fight and just kind of wasn't wasn't able to hang in through the third round, lost that fight by finish. And this will be his next fight since then. So he'll be fighting Charles Oliveira, who had done pretty well at, fly, at featherweight. He's had some weight-cutting issues in the past where he hasn't always been able to make weight at that class. Uh, excellent offensive jiu-jitsu. His defensive jiu-jitsu, is, it's all right, but he's he still gets caught in submissions every so often. He got caught by um, Ricardo Lamas. He also got caught by Anthony Pettis. So he'll be moving back up to lightweight. Hopefully the move up helps him out where he's not cutting as much weight. He's not as drained. He's able to perform better even if it's against bigger guys. As far as how I see this fight going, what's interesting about Brooks is that he wins a lot of fights and he was obviously very very effective in Bellator, but he's not exactly a guy who's got like one sort of trait or one sort of skill set that really stands out as something where it's like, oh, I have to fight Will Brooks. I have to deal with this specific thing. He's a pretty good striker. He hits hard. He's pretty aggressive. Um, decent wrestling background. He was a high school wrestler. I don't believe he wrestled in college, but I mean, as far as what level he competed, I think as far as where his um, actual level is at, I mean, he'd probably be a decent college wrestler had he actually gone and done so. But again, there are D1 champions and other D1 wrestlers who float around in MMA. I mean, even Michael Chandler, who he had fought, was a D1 All-American. And I believe if he hadn't beaten Jordan, Jordan Burroughs during his time in college, he was up on Jordan Burroughs at one point. So a guy like Michael Chandler is a guy who Will Brooks was able to beat and able to get a win over. So it shows that even if he's not at the highest level, he can kind of hang and be tough against those types of guys. But his jiu-jitsu, again, he's not really submitting people. It's not like his guard-passing game is the slickest ever. Whereas Oliveira, uh, when you look at him, you you see some things that are spe- or specifically really strong with him. So obviously his offensive jiu-jitsu, he's very good off of his back. Um... Obviously, he's got a good, good passing game off his back. He can sweep. He can submit. Uh, has a lot of different submissions in his repertoire. He's hit stuff between his reverse cast slicer against um, Eric Wisely to just more typical guillotines, which he's been pretty effective with. Um, I know he had a pretty good one against Jonathan Brookins in the past, but he's beaten a lot of really good guys with submissions. So if you look at this matchup, you'd have to figure if Brooks tries to take him down and play the grappling game with him, that's not going to be the smartest move for him. On the feet, Oliver is really long, and he's got a pretty decent Muay Thai game. He's not exactly the most explosive guy. He's not really putting guys out with kicks or knees or elbows necessarily, but he's he's definitely jacking guys up. So if you're Will Brooks and you don't have exactly the best jiu-jitsu game, you probably don't want to grapple with Oliver. On the feet, it'll be interesting to see how he deals with the length. But I think if he can make this fight dirty, if he can kind of clinch up with him against the fence, not really. If he takes him down, play it's kind of safe. I don't think you really want to go grappler for grappler on it and try to pass guards and try to submit him. I think you just kind of want to play it safe. If you do get him down, then just kind of watch your posture, throw some safe strikes, maybe try to get back to your feet. But outside of that, it, it what's, what's so interesting about to this to me about this fight is that on the feet, Oliveira has a real way to win this fight. I think his length can be a problem. Um, if he can take some shots, which, I mean, Brooks Brooks hits hard, but Brooks isn't exactly known for knocking everybody that he fights out. But if he can take some shots and just kind of use his length, maybe he beats a guy like Will Brooks on the feet. If this fight goes to the ground, um, it'll be interesting to see how aggressive Oliveira is. Is he able to submit Brooks? Is, he, is Brooks able to stay out of the submissions and just kind of pound him out and kind of grind on him? It, it'll, be, it'll be a very interesting matchup for me. I, I think as far as who I'd pick between the two, 
what's interesting, what's most um, surprising to me is that in Vegas or on, on the odds makers on this, Brooks is almost a three to one favorite on some sites, depending on where you go. I think that's a big mistake on their part, unless they know something about Oliveira that I don't, unless they know that he's moving up or for some kind of reason, or maybe he feels like he's done with the sport. He's not going to be a champion. And now he's just trying to fight out his contract. Unless there's something that these odds makers know that I don't, I think that this fight's a lot closer than that. I'm going to be putting some money on Oliveira, even though I think this is a very close fight and I'm not exactly sure that Oliveira is going to win. I think for those kinds of odds, you kind of have to play on that. And quite frankly, Oliveira, if it's a stand-up only fight, who do you pick? Do you pick Brooks or Oliveira? I mean, there's a real argument for Oliveira. If it's a grappling match, who do you pick, Brooks or Oliveira? Probably Oliveira. So for, for me, I think the safe bet here is going to be Oliveira, but this is a very competitive fight. It's one that I'm really excited to see.